what lies behind the creation of an articulated robotic hand in the realm of soft robotics. Let's unveil the art of designing a hybrid, rigid soft robotic system. It's a harmonious fusion of mimicking human hand essentials while streamlining for reliable manufacturing. The resulting synergy produces a design grounded in the biological principles of a human hand, but tailored for robotics. It comprises bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, the skin, and the hand's powering force. Actuators, akin to muscles or motors. This intricate interplay of soft and rigid components grants the robotic hand enhanced capabilities. Let's have a closer look at this ensemble. So, a human hand's bones offer support and movement. That's why our robotic hand features a skeletal structure. These rigid links mirror bones. They create a load-bearing framework which facilitates the hand's motion despite gravity acting on the hand. The joints provide flexibility and allow for rotations, just like in the human hand. The many joints enable an array of fluid, human-like gestures and actions. Actuators act as the hand's muscles and cause force. However, that alone wouldn't enable finger movement. That's why tendons play a crucial role. They connect the actuators to the bones, therefore enabling finger movement. The actuators cause a force that tensions a tendon, which in return pulls on a finger. Similarly, an external force acting on a finger causes a tensioning force on a tendon, which acts on the actuator. The actuators are aligned in the forearm with distinct design requisites. Pairs of actuators are coupled via the tendons to the skeleton in an antagonistic manner. When an actuator contracts or pulls, the other actuator expands or releases. Ligaments interconnect bones and form joints that mimic the human tendon-muscle bone system, or musculoskeletal system, as it is also called. This design augments the hand's dexterity and manipulation skills. Now, let's navigate the realm of design choices. We've mentioned that our robotic hand mimics its human counterpart. However, engineers should seek optical technical solutions, not necessarily direct imitations of nature. The key goal is to imitate the functionality while mimicking the natural system to a certain degree. Crucial decisions await engineers. Degrees of freedom, finger count, and thumb design require careful consideration. Keep in mind, while higher degrees of freedom amplify dexterity, they also increase complexity, cost, and weight. When it comes to grasping motions, we want to pay attention to Kutkowski's and Fakes' grasp taxonomy. They guide the robotic hand design. The categorizations are derived from human hand interactions with tools and objects. It serves as a standard to create more biometric designs for effective human-like interactions with objects. According to Fakes' taxonomy, grasps can be categorized into a range of precision to power grasps, with intermediate grasp types combining precision and power. Notice that the thumb replicates the precision of the human thumb's opposable motion. Its design significantly impacts grasping capabilities and is used in most grasp types of Kutkowski's and Fakes' categorizations. Each grasp in the range between precision and power can be distinguished by the location of the thumb, either abducted or adducted. The categorization shows that a simple two-fingered gripper without a thumb, isn't enough to replicate the dexterity of a human hand. Next, let's have a closer look at joint mechanisms. They bring our robotic hand to life. The pin joint, also known as a revolute joint, unlocks rotational motion along a single axis. It's a straight pin connecting two artificial bones, enabling them to pivot. The pin requires a hole in each bone to function, a design feature not seen in nature. Therefore, 
This hinge-like joint achieves rotations like human fingers, without mimicking the human joint design. It's the most traditional design. Its simplicity makes it a staple in robotic hands, with a defined axis for straightforward kinematic modeling and simulation. However, this design lacks the ability to program compliance without introducing a large motion inaccuracy. When overloaded, this joint will break instead of dislocating. Fabrication methods for a pin joint vary from traditional machining to 3D printing. For small batches, the bones too are typically 3D printed. For larger batches, they are injection molded. The pins, however, require higher strength. That limits the material choice to metals, which must be machined. Reducing friction is key, which is achieved through smart material choices, post-processing, or precise bearings. This is a flexure joint. It is the most elastic choice for a joint design. It utilizes flexible materials to achieve controlled motion, free from any sliding parts. This deformable joint offers smooth articulation, but tends to lack accuracy if external forces are applied to a finger. A careful flexure design can minimize deflections in unactuated directions of a joint, which in return improves accuracy. You'll notice the elastic wiggling or back and forth swinging is like an elastic pendulum, returning the fingers to their positions when unloaded. Actuators combat this force when flexing the finger. Yet, the flexure joint can also extend fingers. This potentially reduces the need for antagonistic tendons and actuators. Now, this is the synovial joint. It's inspired by our body's own design. Its multi-axial freedom grants a broad range of motion, and the rolling surfaces between two bones facilitate these fluid movements. Further, the joint dislocates instead of breaking under large loads. The stretchy joint capsule holds the bones together. To minimize fracture, the capsule can be filled with lubricant. To achieve material harmony, Different but compatible properties are combined through advanced manufacturing techniques. This one is the rolling contact joint. It rolls two bones against each other, much like the synovial joint. To reduce friction and enable broad motion, ligaments, like strings, crosswise attach the bones. Manufacturing these types of joints involves 3D printing the bones and using strings as ligaments. That's because we want to utilize flexible materials for impact compliance. And there you have it, the joint mechanisms that form the foundation of our robotic hand's mobility. They combine simplicity and elasticity to create a harmonious movement. Actuation is key in dynamic robotics. Our toolkit presents us with two options for actuating tendon-driven mechanisms electric motors, and artificial muscles. Electromagnetic motors, notably servo motors, can drive tendons by rolling the tendons up on spools. The motors use a feedback-based position control system, delivering precision and control. In smaller scale applications, like our robotic hand, servo motors based on permanent magnet DC motors offer compact solution that is commercially available. Electromagnetic motors are compact, easy to control, and reliable, but they are inherently stiff and dense due to their metal composition. Artificial muscles are on the rise, and might eventually replace electromagnetic motors in several application fields. The field of soft robotics is particularly focused on the design of artificial muscles like fluid elastomer or electrohydraulic actuators. Fluid elastomer actuators are inflated by either gas or liquid that comes from a pump, or a combination of valve and pump. Electrohydraulic actuators use electrostatic forces to zip opposing electrodes together and thereby displace liquid. High voltage power supplies control the charges on the electrodes to control the actuator motion. There is a range of other actuator principles that can contract similar to a muscle. 
The selection of the appropriate actuator to power a robotic hand should be determined by factors such as its availability, ease of integration, and suitability for rapid prototyping. Our goal in this course is to construct a tendon-driven robot hand with each phalange of the hand connected to accessible actuators through tendons. This integration ensures motion range and torque, while some joints may couple to reduce actuators. Now, let's explore the outer layer, the skin. The skin is like a protective shield. It safeguards delicate mechanics while simultaneously enhancing friction and offering potential for sensing. However, designing the skin requires careful consideration. Sensor signals can falter and the attainable range of motion may see constraints. Therefore, crafting the skin offers some choices that depend on the hand's design. For example, ready-made gloves suit certain designs, especially in medical settings. Plastics and silicons, on the other hand, are quite durable. For heightened customization needs, 3D printing emerges as a compelling option. Placing a camera near our robotic hand enhances perception and interaction. Strategically placed, it offers a comprehensive view and empowers the robot to recognize objects gauge distances, and adapt in real time. Sensors elevate our hand's capabilities. For example, joint sensors measure precise finger angles and positions. Delicate tactile sensors inhabit the fingertips. They allow the robot to perceive and react to object contact and varying pressure levels. Furthermore, actuator sensors monitor voltages or currents, thus revealing insights into torque and power exertion during diverse tasks. In conclusion, crafting a functional and dexterous soft robotic hand requires meticulous consideration of components and design choices. Emulating the human hand's principles while adapting them for a robotic context leads to a versatile and capable creation.